Senator Kamina Johnson Smith, hello to you. Welcome to the Jamaican <laughs> Diaspora Live Online. Good morning, good morning, and it's really great to be here with you. <laughs> thank you. Great. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. So, Kamina, Senator Kamina Johnson Smith, first up, for those in the diaspora listening to us, and we've been getting some uh, messages already of those greeting us, uh, the first two messages out of Toronto, Canada. We have uh, Beverline. Uh, who says, I'm here to take in the newly appointed guest or new foreign affairs mm-hmm. minister. So she's anxious to hear. And Angela, who is also in Toronto, who tells us uh, it's uh, f- minus five, feels like minus 11. I want to be in Jamaica, she says. Never mind, Angela. So then yes. let's... <laughs> <laughs> good morning, Beverlyn and Angela. It's good to, hear, good to be here with you. And uh, Angela, I'm sending you some sunshine over the, the telephone lines and through the, the airwaves because it's a beautiful morning here. Indeed it is. <laughs> so let's uh, get to the beginning, beginning because we want persons to, uh, to, to have as much information as possible on uh, the newly minted Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith. First up, a bit of your, uh, your background. Uh, in terms of where in Jamaica you grew up, uh, schools attended, because you know we like to latch on. We like to hear which school certain people attended so we can say, yay, one of us. So over to you. Okay, so born um, born and grow in Kingston. <laughs> yes. Born and grow yes. um, in Kingston and, well, in St. Andrews specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, went to Faye Simpson and then to Mona Prep and then to Campion, and then to Uimona, where I studied um, French and international relations. Vraiment? Ooh la la! Vraiment, <laughs> oui, et je vous entends <laughs> when you speak your French and your Spanish. Um, they're always very impressive, uh, Mr. Marco. Thank you. Um, that was my first degree. Mm-hmm. I, in my second year, I got a scholarship to go to France and teach English. Wow. Um, and my family agreed that I could do that if I guaranteed that I would not get seduced and would come back, <laughs> you know, by far in life, and that I would come back and finish my degree. So wow. I did that. I came back. I finished my degree. Yes. And then I worked for a year at the French Embassy in Kingston um, because they had a vacancy for a bilingual, cultural, and um, educational and linguistic attaché. Mm -hmm. So I did that for a year, during which time I applied for law, got into the direct entry program, which is where you do the bachelor's in two years instead of three. Mm -hmm. So I left and then went to Cave Hill, um, where I studied law, and um, also played a little bit of football, as you... What? (laughs) What? I I was was vice captain of the Jamaica girls football team at Cave Hill. Oh. And I also was a founding member of the UE Dance Society at Cave Hill yeah. and um, participated in their national festival where I won a silver medal, which is still at UE there. Wow. And um, <laughs> <laughs> then I returned to Jamaica, did Norman Manley, of course, um, which was wonderful. I um, was valedictorian and um, represented wow. the school in Malaysia and Trinidad um, at Moot the international mooting, um, on the international mooting circuit. Yes. Then I left and entered private practice, the private bar. I started with a small firm, Clinton Hart & Co., where they really threw me in the deep end and ensured that I had the best experience learning um, learning to swim, you know, when you throw a child in and say, you know, <laughs> and, and they, they, they learn faster than anybody else. Yes. I had that experience with them and then left and went to Cable and Wireless where I um, was for 13 years moving up through the ranks in-house counsel at different levels um, until I left at, I left at uh, the level of corporate secretary and head of um, corporate projects uh, uh, in the legal realm mm-hmm. and um, started my own firm uh, which is a young firm now just over uh, maybe a year and a half <laughs> <laughs> uh, which I now have to suspend yes. uh, in order to enter this new sphere so that is it in a nutshell I hope wow. I didn't give you more than you asked no no more. <laughs> that was quite comprehensive <laughs> well done goodness yes. uh, quite remarkable <laughs> so then 
uh, you you were uh, appointed uh, senator, uh, what, about four years ago? I was first appointed in December 2009. Uh, oh, did, oh we, yes, 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 yes. So that's, right, yes, I was yes. appointed midterm in mm-hmm. the in the um, Golding administration. Right. And then on change of administration, um, then Prime Minister Holness appointed me. Uh, sorry, then leader of the opposition Holness appointed me um, in opposition where I served, and now uh, Prime Minister Holness has reappointed me in government once more. So this is my third term in the Senate. What has your uh, senatorial experience been like? How, what kind of, uh, what kind of, 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 of feelings you do you get knowing that you first of all have served in the Senate of Jamaica? What, what, what does that, what does that feel like? It has been an excellent opportunity to have a voice on issues which I feel strongly are important for the betterment of Jamaicans' lives. Um, I've taken on issues which generally have fallen under the categories of governance, um, education, and the protection of women and children. Uh, Those have been my focus areas. But I have um, also just generally been very interested in legislation and the legislative process and ensuring that you well you know that the Senate is a chamber of review. Right. Um, So while members in the lower house tend to have a more political approach to debates and view things um, and and take a different type of approach from time to time, the Senate um, has Well, we have sought to be, and I personally have sought to be, more issues-based. And my legal background and my love for drafting, as a matter of fact, has always made me um, want to approach the laws from a from a perspective of what is what is in this that works, what is in this that needs to be fixed, and the opportunity to press for amendments where you can see that things could be done better. or to support things which are really in the interest of Jamaica has been excellent. Um, It has been an excellent experience. Great. And now to the appointment as uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. I'm not sure how these things are done, but when you got the call or when you were invited to the meeting, whatever it was, whatever the occasion, however it was done, what was your (laughs) initial reaction? My initial reaction was, seriously? <laughs> you want me to get divorced? <laughs> because I thought, oh the my traveling. goodness, how is Hobby going to greet yes. this news of the traveling? Yes. Um, but he, but it's an amazing opportunity, and, and he has been hugely supportive um, of the opportunity as well, because it's recognized, I mean, how important it is that, um, or relationships with other countries are relevant to our national development plans in respect of growth. Yes. So both the diaspora and the, the issues of trade and commerce, the, well, those three issues yes. um, are very important to us uh, from a policy perspective. All right, well, and, let's, uh, sorry, go yeah. ahead. Mm-hmm. No, 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 that's, right. that's it. That's right, well, let's take them one at a time. Uh, let's 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 talk about the the uh, the, the approach and the, the the policy direction in which uh, the the government is looking to take uh, the the country with respect to uh, foreign affairs and foreign trade. Uh, the, what's 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 that what's that overarching uh, policy when it comes to uh, foreign affairs and foreign trade? So, from a, a blue sky perspective, mm-hmm. we believe that we have to optimize our relations and we have to increase our level of trade. We need to increase exports in particular um, to even out our balance of trade deficits um, with certain countries and we need to identify new opportunities that perhaps are not, have not yet been properly explored. 
we similarly need to expand as part of that our relationship with the uh, with our Jamaicans who live overseas, with our diaspora. We need to not only expand our connection from an emotional perspective, because we realize that as time passes and generations um, change, that the type of relationship with Jamaica also changes and how we need to engage and how we can engage and optimize those relationships and opportunities they pose rather than viewing them as more distant, but saying that they create new opportunities, we want to explore and expand that. And in respect of our diplomatic relations, of course, we want to ensure that the image of Jamaica is as positive as it can be and that we leverage our abilities and our resources in terms of our sporting excellence, our creative industries excellence, and the opportunities that those present not only for education and national development at home, but for the enrichment of global culture and global people and for our persons who live overseas, our Jamaicans who live overseas, for them to benefit from those types of exchanges as well. And uh, no doubt, uh, what's it? Uh, f- uh, f- what do they normally say in foreign affairs circles? Uh, f- friend to all, enemy to none or something like that? Oh, absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. Insofar as we are able to maintain that position, and I Mm -hmm. think Jamaica has done an excellent job thus far Mm -hmm. um, over 53 years of independence in in ensuring that we create good relations um, with other countries, I I see um, that as an excellent base on which to build. Indeed. So then, you uh, were you have outlined the policy direction of the government with respect to foreign affairs and foreign trade. Let's get to uh, the the mechanisms now. Uh, so, for example, let's talk about the the diaspora in terms of the the mechanisms, the ways in which uh, the the government, through foreign affairs and foreign trade, will be seeking to. Uh, continue the engagement of the diaspora and to even enhance the existing engagement. Right. So clearly I have not even completed two weeks on the job. I know, <laughs> I know you recognize it as a practical and, and um, as a real and practical element in this discussion. Yes. And, um, and I am, as you will continue to find, a real and practical person Indeed. as well. So ordering steps and ensuring that I have a proper understanding of the context in which I'm operating is also very important. Yes. I don't believe in jumping into a situation presuming that I know everything and um, sort of running roughshod. So I've started the briefing process. I met with um, DCAD this week, which is the department, um, the Diaspora and Consular Affairs Division which falls within the Foreign and Consular Services, one of the four main areas within the ministry. We had an excellent discussion, and, um, well, what was brought to bear were the different elements um, of work which are underway, so that I am now reviewing the diaspora policy, the Jamaica National, the draft Jamaica National Diaspora Policy, uh, for its, compatibility with the policies and also for um, ensuring that when it is proposed to cabinet for its approval as a green paper and for further consultation, that it is aligned and that it is in 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 a state with which the diaspora can also have further views and engagement um, through this mechanism. So the Jamaica National Diaspora Policy Uh, its review and its completion and passage will be an important priority. Okay. In respect of, and and that, that of course, includes uh, principles and different mechanisms as well. So so that's that's the, I would say, the first step in understanding the framework which we are going to apply generally. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the policy positions which had been enunciated by... um, the current administration by the Jamaica Labour Party in its campaign was also the review of the ability of members of the diaspora to vote. And that is something which I have taken steps. I've asked 
the ministry to communicate with the headquarters of our missions in certain countries where we know that those countries have a framework within which their diaspora votes so that we can look at the direct modalities because clearly um, as uh, members of the public in opposition there's a certain level of information to which you have access and then there's another um, level to which you have access as a minister of government which could allow for better decision making and then from there we'll of course establish a matrix uh, of the, the, um, the mechanism used in those countries and engage in a consultative uh, effort with the diaspora and locally through the uh, Joint Select Committee in Parliament, which is a, was established in 2009 to address diaspora affairs, but which I understand has not um, sat for the last four years. So we will be reactivating that committee, and one of its uh, tasks will be to review the mechanisms uh, available for us to pursue the ability of members of the diaspora to vote in Jamaican elections. Uh, so that, of course, will be an important um, step in terms of taking diaspora engagement to another level um, and uh, seeing how best that can work, both for the members of the diaspora and Jamaica. And we recognize that that is um, quite an emotional issue for persons here as well as overseas. The consultation will be key in ensuring that all views are brought on board and that we get the best result possible for all concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, in respect of in respect of matters which have been under discussion, so the last conference, uh, diaspora conference, which was held um, in Jamaica in Montego Bay, there is a work plan that came out of that uh, body. So I have requested it and just received that this week. Um, so I'm now reviewing the action items and the responsible persons, etc., to get a sense of, of what work is underway, what work should actually be underway, and what needs to be underway. And um, we can understand the different. From that, I will have a better sense of the different springboards and platforms and where energy needs to be placed and where it perhaps needs to be reallocated. Uh, in respect of the Diaspora Advisory Board, uh, which is an important mechanism, and gentlemen, allow me to greet you specifically in that regard. Um, and I, I asked that a teleconference be convened um, with the Diaspora Advisory Board at the earliest possible convenient time, I understand it's a number of persons, so we'll have to pull everyone together um, in the two weeks after Easter so that I can get a sense um, of the work of the board and the persons on it and um, they can similarly get a sense of me and we can decide how best we're going to work. And in the very, very short term, I have the honor and um, pleasure on Wednesday of bringing greetings at the opening ceremony of the Diaspora Education Task Force Summit, which is going to be held next week. So I'm very much looking forward to that. I know it will be an opportunity to meet persons who are um, in directly and hands-on involved on the ground and also to understand a bit more of the work that's being done on, by that task force. So that is... Um, wow, you, you have your plate probably. full. <laughs> the plate is full, but, um, but that's how we like it. Yes. <laughs> that's how we like it. Indeed. Yes. Well, but th th there was another uh, issue with respect to, uh, I, I think it might have been in, your mani in the manifesto of the Jamaica Labour Party as well, with respect to the appointment of a senator from the diaspora. Is that likely to be under consideration as well, even as you contemplate the possibilities of the diaspora vote? Yes, that continues to be. I think the, the priority was the issue of the vote. Okay. But certainly uh, because we, are, we would be looking at the diaspora, the um, possible member of the Senate from the diaspora, as a mechanism of expansion of the Senate, which is, all, which is part of a, of a um, series of constitutional reforms that we are looking at. So because it will be part of a broader picture, um, the, the Joint Select Committee, I think the priority will be for the Joint Select Committee to review the issue of the vote as a priority 
And then when the larger constitutional issue of the representation is being addressed, then that sub that sub element can be brought in. If if you understand that about oh, yes. ordering steps, it makes mm-hmm. sure to it, it would make sense to go from the broader framework and include that than to start at the micro and then seek to expand. So that will that will be dealt with under the larger constitutional reform. My special guest co hosts in the studios, uh, Leo Gilling, diaspora uh, convener of the Dia- Jamaica Diaspora Education Task Force, and they're having a big week uh, of activities coming up, and you're going to be hearing so much more uh, not, to- not too long from now. Wayne Golding, Esquire, attorney at law, Casey Oldboy. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> Leo Gilling went to Orokabesa <laughs> High School and Port Maria yeah, High, School. High School and Sam Sharp Teachers College, etc. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> and Wayne Golding, of course, Kingston College, all decked in, in his purple uh, today. And so they're, they're, they're co-hosting with me in studio. And, uh, well, the, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade has been on with us, Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith, and she greeted you earlier on, gentlemen. So I'll give you the opportunity now just to uh, officially say hi. <laughs> I want to say welcome, congratulations uh, to the the, on, uh, the Honorable... The yes, s- indeed. Uh, Senator, yes. Um, uh, and I, I, I welcome you. I'm looking forward to working with you. And uh, we've heard so many good things about your energy, so we're uh, hoping to tap into that. <laughs> yes, I just want to say also good morning to the senator. And you know, it, it's so funny we were talking about mm-hmm. women's empowerment this morning with Dale Walker Huntington yes, in Florida. Yes, and yes. I just want to say this is another piece to the puzzle. <laughs> Congratulations, and we are so happy to be able to work with somebody of such caliber. And uh, I, I'll tell you, you know, I did my homework here. You know, the best thing I think about the senator is that she has some deep Kingston College roots. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, oh dear. God. Oh, dear. <laughs> here we go. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> Thank you for your patience with us, Senator the Honorable Kamina Johnson-Smith. Thank you. <laughs> Hello? Hello. Uh, Hello? Did we lose her? Oh, dear. Sorry about that. Let's let's reconnect. I'm sure she heard all of that anyway. Uh, I'm sure she heard all of that. So we've been uh, we've been uh, profiling in a good way. We've been just introducing, I should say, uh, the the honourable uh, minister to uh, Jamaicans at home and across the diaspora. Uh, sorry, we lost you there, minister. Hello. Yes, I'm not sure what happened. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. But I'm sure. Uh, you would have heard uh, Leo Gilling and, uh, and 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 Wayne Golding uh, just greeting you specially. And Wayne no, Go- I didn't. The phone was down. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> oh no! Okay, can you rewind, gentlemen? <laughs> yes, go, 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 Leo Gilling. I, I don't want to miss my warm. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm not, I'm not going to say that the one coming from anything related to any purple colours is worth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I, that that is so. Okay, don't quote me. I'm not saying it. <laughs> Senator, I have on black this morning. This is Leo Gilling, right? <laughs> okay, very good. Well, I want to say um, congratulations and and really really looking forward to to working with you. Um, I I understand you have a lot of energy, and as as I said earlier, I I, I would like for us to tap into that that type of energy. And, and, and I'm, it's wonderful. I'm saying congratulations to you. Thank you so very much. So very much. And I'm looking forward to it as well. And the, the fact that you're connected with education, which is my heart. I, I really am looking forward to, to meeting you and to working with you. Right. Thank you. Yes. And this is Wayne Golding. Good morning, <laughs> Senator. Uh, we are so pleased to uh, be working with you moving forward. I am so impressed with uh, your background, especially because, you know, we have a saying in the diaspora, we have a lot of experts who are not qualified, but I am, oh, wow. <laughs> yes, I'm telling you, I mean, I, I just love what I heard this morning, and I certainly look forward on behalf of the Southern United States to be working with you and uh, moving this whole diaspora phenomenon forward, um, and as I said, and you didn't hear it, but I'll just repeat it, 
that I, I, I know you are from great stock because I did my homework. <laughs> and, of course, <laughs> here we go again. <laughs> and I, I have to repeat it. I have to repeat it. You, uh, you have some great connections to that uh, great institution on North Street. And so I, I look forward to swapping some stories and getting some background information yes, from you. So <laughs> congratulations. And, of course, the diaspora stands ready at your service. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much, gentlemen. Great. So, Minister, let's Mm -hmm. let's get now to the business of how uh, the 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 uh, the Minister of Foreign, well, the government through the Minister of Mm -hmm. Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade will uh, will be uh, engaging the Jamaican missions across the diaspora in furtherance of uh, the uh, of, of of the the overall and overarching. Uh, uh, policy of the government in terms of moving the country forward? Right. So again, because it's early days, there is um, there's a limit to the level of granularity that I can give you on that question. Mm-hmm. But what I can say is that we want to become more results-oriented. Uh, we recognize that we don't have, and, and I've heard the concerns expressed that the ministry will not have a minister of state, um, or does not at this time, because we, we will have to review if it comes necessary to review, but we are committed as a highly indebted country, and I'm sure members of the diaspora, while they have um, evinced this concern, also must recognize that at some point we have to commit in a real way to trying to do things differently without compromising the impactfulness or the effectiveness of our work. So we are committed to seeking to use our missions, both embassies and consulates, more effectively for en- as routes of engagement. So I have asked for a status report on our missions uh, in terms of their, their work, their level of engagement, um, engagement of personnel at the head in particular with um, the Jamaican community as well as in respect of the other roles that is engaging opportunities for trade, identifying opportunities for trade and commerce, etc. Et which will provide uh, me and my senior team with uh, a greater understanding of the current work and the current level of engagement that exists. And that will in turn allow us to better understand how we can streamline but as a matter of principle, we believe that heads of missions, whether consular or at the ambassadorial um, commission level, that these individuals must be agents of engagement for us here at home. So that we, the, the concept of, of our missions must recognize, or our, all our missions must recognize that their roles, um, are not only international relations, but diaspora relations and trade relations specifically as well. How the modalities through which and whether it is that we have the opportunity or budget to ensure that we have dedicated personnel also engaged in that regard, that may be a function not only of money, but also of the, the utility of the particular mission um, geographic location, you know, et cetera, um, how useful it can be and how, how much bang for the buck, for want of a better phrase, we, we can get out of um, dedicated personnel in those missions as well. But um, so, yes, we will looking at, look, be looking at exactly how we can ensure that um, the consular services and offices can be um, optimized to not only meet the needs of um, Jamaicans, um, the expanding needs, as a matter of fact, um, globally and in our existing um, missions, but we will be looking at how we can ensure that the personnel there um, engages more deeply with the diaspora and in in respect of trade. In fact, one of the things I've I've been... uh talking about over the years is how we can, there, we when we travel across the diaspora, we encounter, and I remember when I was in, the first time I went to uh, Los Angeles, California, and Leo Gilling here drove me around to the different uh, Jamaican enterprises operated ultimately by Jamaican entrepreneurs. 
-hmm. And, uh, you know, when I travel elsewhere, Canada, the UK, uh, Bermuda, uh, etc., Haiti, and, and see the Jamaican enterprises, and I'm, I'm saying, uh, shouldn't we be able to get together as best as possible all these Jamaican entrepreneurs uh, mm -hmm. talking with our local manufacturers and exporters here. What what do you need? Uh, what are the items that we could supply you with? What mm -hmm. kind of price points are we talking? In fact, I'm, I know we have Expo Jamaica coming up. I don't know mm -hmm. if they have that on their agenda in terms of engaging uh, diaspora entrepreneurs to try and mm -hmm. uh, and cement those ties, uh, so that we can we can uh, we can serve our people because uh, in what is called I think nostalgic trade that mm -hmm. they call it mm -hmm. these days. It, it seems to me that definitely is an area worth uh, worth exploring further. Absolutely, and I will um, I will make inquiries about the the level of engagement that has taken place in respect of. Uh, well, at the entrepreneurial level, yes, um, and um, I have, I will admit that I have not yet had the opportunity to ask about preparations for Expo, although I understand it, th that those are under the way. Yes, okay, yeah, because that's definitely something to look forward to. All right, mm -hmm. so now the 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 other you mentioned at the start <laughs> earlier on about you know when you were asked uh, to serve as minister of foreign affairs and foreign trade and, uh, you know, the travel uh, popped in, in into the mind. And I'm mm -hmm. sure you're going to have to do a bit of this in terms mm -hmm. of, especially with the diaspora, maybe moving at different points and at different times. Uh, what can the diaspora expect? I mean, they would want, uh, everybody wants a piece of you, pardon the expression, right now, uh, mm -hmm. because you're the new minister of, of foreign affairs and mm -hmm. foreign trade across the diaspora. How do you plan to to be as accessible as you can uh, mm -hmm. to, 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 to all these uh, diasporans uh, across the globe? Well, we will need to, I, I do want to um, do a quote-unquote mini tour to, um, as an initial engagement uh, as, and, and to have that done as soon as possible. But I... Um, I do hope that um, that there will be a reasonableness in the expectations of persons <laughs> as well. And keep saying, no, I mean, seriously. No, you're right. One moment, please. I want to come back on the point of reasonableness. <laughs> uh, just yes. a moment, please. We have to okay. take a break. We're Let's speaking. Talk some GDP to get ratio. <laughs> Let's talk about that. <laughs> Indeed. Senator okay. the Honorable Kamina Johnson-Smith, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. We'll be back. Uh, to wrap up my special guest co-hosts in the studios of Power 106 FM, Leo Golding, Leo, oh dear, <laughs> I knew that was going to happen at some point. Oh Leo gosh. Gilling, he's the, he's the convener of the Jamaica Diaspora Education Task Force. And uh, keep listening to Power 106 uh, from now because you're going to be hearing more about that. Next week is a busy week for the Jamaica Diaspora Education Task Force. Uh, uh, and of course, he's uh, he's a, 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 a past student of Arakabesa High School and Port Maria High School and Sam Sharp Teachers College. And Wayne Goldie, Wayne Goldie, Wayne Goldie, the purple is has him days. Is the Jamaica Diaspora <laughs> Advisory Board member for the Southern United States Attorney at Law, Casey Old Boy, and. Uh, Online, of course, uh, Senator the Honorable Kamina Johnson-Smith, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, uh, who is a graduate of Campion College and, 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 and uh, University of the West Indies and, 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 and so on and so forth. Right, because you heard all of that earlier on, so we uh, won't Durban, go with, uh -huh. does, does Campion have some purple in their color? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh Coincidentally. Royalty, royalty. It does. It does. <laughs> and, 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 she, she says it does. Yes, yes <laughs> indeed, indeed. And, of course, uh, uh, well, let's just use the opportunity to, to remind those of us who already know, since it's, it's, it's all coming out before the program ends, that Senator... Uh, the Honorable Kamina Johnson-Smith is uh, daughter of uh, Ambassador Anthony Johnson, who happened to have attended a school not too far from where we are here. 
and 7 North Street. But that's as far as we'll go with that because we really don't have the time for Wayne Golding to regale us with all of the other stuff. But let's, let's get to reasonableness now, uh, uh, Minister, with respect to the, the, the likelihood, likelihood and the possibilities of your being able to engage directly face-to-face with the Jamaican diaspora. Right. So we will have to, we'll have to, um, as I've said, recognize that we have budgetary constraints in, 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 on one hand, and also um, just that we have an opportunity to think about how we can do things differently. So I'm a big believer in how technology can facilitate um, deeper engagement. And the ability to use not only um, straight technology for teleconferences, et cetera, but um, social media as a means of even broader engagement that you might than you might even than you might be able to achieve with a face to face. So I may travel and be able to interface with X number of people who can um, conceivably make it out of their busy work day to a town hall meeting, etc. But I can engage um, on Facebook with perhaps broader, a broader number of persons who can engage from wherever it is they are. And if we're looking at also expanding our engagement generationally, then meeting people where they are in terms of how they have, or the diaspora has gotten used to engaging as well. I mean, a lot of young people are just, they are mobile. And if you are not online, you are not with them. Yeah. And um, so I am I'm very aware of that, and, and the team and I have been discussing that. And um, this very small but very energetic PR team is actually working on a social media policy. Now, we've launched, as you may know, um, our Facebook page. On my first day, we launched our first fa- Facebook page and um, at the headquarters. And we're looking at expanding from there and also at how it is that we can use the, me- the mechanism to engage more deeply. Uh, so that's facebook.com slash? It's MAFT, it's right, dot M- slash MAFT. MAFT. P. M-F-A-F-T, mm-hmm. Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I'm sorry, and yes, Affairs. yes, yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so you will, already you will see, um, uh, a little video of my first week, which we did on from the Tuesday to the Tuesday. Um, you'll see the launch day with the fact that I'm the first woman uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. Oh, yes. Which, um, for Jamaica, which has um, really engaged people, as a matter of fact, <laughs> has engaged a lot of people because not even I had realized that we had not yet had, had a woman in the post. So... Um, uh, as we make up 51% of the population, and we have even have a civil um, society group by the name 51%. Yes. Um, women are, mm. are engaged, right, and and um, and energized by the thought as well, which has been a really positive energy behind it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So then uh, we, uh, you've mentioned social media, and of course mm-hmm. uh, we use the opportunity on behalf of our. Managing director and uh, and executive producer of this program, uh, Newton James CD, uh, to commit to continuing our engagement here at Power 106 FM, being the number one diaspora radio station, uh, to uh, play our part in in enhancing diaspora relations uh, through through our series of uh, broadcasts and interactions and transmitting of information and new developments coming out of, uh, of foreign affairs and foreign trade to the diaspora and back. So that will continue, and, and we look forward to, uh, to, to what all the opportunities that that kind of engagement will present. Wonderful, and we thank you very much for that on behalf of the ministry. Um, and this administration is very much about partnerships. It's about building partnerships and expanding partnerships because it is only through partnerships, given given what we have to achieve and given what we should have achieved and haven't yet and given what we ought to and are able to achieve. If we enter into partnerships, we are we as a as a nation and and as an expanded nation through our diaspora, we are going to make 
Jamaicans' lives better together. We are going to. I know it. Good day. On that uh, uh, positive, hopeful uh, note, uh, intentional we w- note. Intentional <laughs> note. I was looking for another word. Not, thanks not for it. Not just hopeful. Yes. Intentional. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for thanks for the third word I was looking for, uh, Minister. It's been it's been a pleasure, and uh, I'm sure that we are going to be engaging you in further discussions uh, for as long as you continue to serve in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. Thank you. I look forward to it. I wish you all an excellent weekend, and including a fantastic experience at CHAMP. And I look forward to being back with you, Dervon, and with other guests as you may have from time to time. I look forward to the partnership with you. Same here. Thank you so much, Minister. All the very best. And to you. Take care. Senator, the Honorable Kamina Johnson-Smith, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, the first female, uh, first woman to serve in that capacity.